So what is actually the highest analog frequency possible? What is the highest frequency there? Um, and this leads us, and this then basically leads us to the so-called Nyquist frequency. However, just by writing down the Nyquist frequency, we, we're just slowly approaching this with a couple of um, thought experiments or just just looking at sine waves, basically. Um, so, so let's um, approach this with the idea. So imagine we are we are doing the forbidden case and setting our normalized frequency to one. Yeah. So remember, normalized frequency should be should be lower than than um, 0.5. But imagine we're setting this to one. So then our our cosine wave turns into two pi n. Yeah, so what we're getting for for normalized frequency of of one out there. Um, so so what is the result of this? So n n is only natural number, so that's zero, one, two, three, and so on. And so so the x of zero is is then obviously this is one. X of one is also one. X of two is also one, and so on and so on. So in terms of in terms of signal, this is essentially a DC signal. So now remember that the um, DC DC would be usually defined defined by f equals zero. Yeah, so zero frequency means DC. So now the problem is. We have we have also the f equals one, which is generating also a DC. Yeah, so this means this means we are getting here so-called ambiguity. So this means if we are if we are getting if we are if we are going above above our frequency 0.5 we are generating ambiguities. So we're generating the same frequency all over again. So this obviously also also works for f equals two, three, and so on and so on. So the same ambiguity we were also generating in DC DC with that. And so and so therefore in order to avoid ambiguity, so we need to we need to stay below this 0.5 rule. Um, so now, after I've, um, after we have looked at the ambiguity in the um, sample domain, so we can also go back now into the analog domain and see what this means for what this means for the analog domain. Okay, so we've got the the ambiguity. In the sample domain, as soon as f is is greater than 0.5, and um, for example, for example, at f equals one, we are getting DC again out there. Okay, so that's the uh, um, the ambiguity we are we are generating in this in the sample domain. So how how does it look like in the in the analog domain? So in the analog domain, remember our mapping between the analog and the sample domain is our normalized frequency is f divided by Fs, yeah. So this was, was was our mapping, and so so therefore, if, if we now apply our our rule that so this ratio should be always lower than 0.5, and we and we multiply this here over, then we are getting this here. 
And so this means that that basically the analog frequencies the analog frequ frequencies need to be below half of the sampling rate. So all analog frequencies need to be below 0.5 fs yeah this looks like a bit like in like an h but it's an n so analog frequencies need to be below 0.5 fs and um, essentially essentially this rule here and this frequency here here this one is called the nyquist frequency Again, this reflects the same idea as in the sample domain that if if we have a sine wave in our analog domain here, so that's our our x a of t, we need to at least sample it here, and we need to sample it here to be able to to recover this frequency. So we need to have a peak and a valley. And this obviously gives us the maximum frequency here is half the sampling, the sampling rate Fs. So this is a Nyquist frequency represented here in the analog domain.